Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Mark. I'm a poker player from Portland, Oregon. And in my last video, I tried to play in every club and bar game in Portland. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to, and I was planning on doing a part two later, but uh, the video did so well. I have to please the YouTube gods. I have to feed the algorithm. So I'm going right now to try and make part two. Right now, I'm off to final table, which I did feature in the first video, but I didn't get to play because there was a list. So I'm gonna drive there right now and uh, hopefully we'll get some good action. I'll see you there. All right, so there's been a little change of plans. Uh, when I got here, there was a wait list. And like in the previous video, I was considering uh, moving to another venue and coming back later. And just as I was about to leave, a seat opened up at the 1-3 and they do have a 1K max buy-in. So I thought, you know what? Let's just go ahead. Let's buy in for 1K and uh, let's make a video out of that. I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty significant part of my bankroll and you can watch Rampage, Mariano and the boys uh, play for insane amounts of money. But I don't know, I'm guessing most of you guys who watch uh, probably do not play at these stakes and uh, you know, buying for 1K and uh, sort of taking a shot, even though it's just 1-3, uh, is maybe going to be relatable to a lot of you guys. So uh, that's why I wanted to go ahead and do that. All right, here I am inside Final Table, buying into the 1-3 game for a thousand bucks the most I ever bought it for. If you want more information about Final Table, make sure to check out part one of this video. I'll throw a link in the description box. I take my seat at the table. Let's get into it. All right, I've been sitting at the table for a little while now, and I haven't really found a spot to get involved. So when I look down at 10-9 suited from under the gun, I'm going to come in with a raise to 15. I get calls from the hijack, small blind, and big blind. So we go four ways to a flop of six, four, king, two hearts. I'm not going to lead into three other players on this board. I check, and action checks around. The turn is a queen of clubs, putting a second flush draw on the board and giving me a gut shot straight draw. The big blind puts out a very small bet of 10 bucks. I make the call, and the two other players fold. Heads up to the river, looking to spike a 10, which doesn't come, it's a three of clubs, completing the club draw. When the big blind checks to me, sitting with 10 high, I think I can represent a club flush and possibly get my opponent off a queen, I fire out a bet of 55 and it gets the job done. In this one, I look down at King Queen offsuit in the hijack and open the action to 15. I get calls from the cutoff, small blind, and big blind, so we go four ways to a flop of Deuce King 9 2 clubs. Action checks to me, and with no clubs in my hand, I'm going to C bet on the larger side here. I make it 45 to go, and everybody folds. In this hand, there's a limp for middle position. The small blind completes, and I look down at 10 9 suited in the big blind. This time, I decide to check my options, so we go three ways to a flop of jack 9 10 two hearts. Small blind checks with two pair on this very connected board. I don't really want this to check through, so I bet 10, and only the middle position player makes the call. The turn is absolutely horrible. It's the queen of hearts. I check, middle position bets 10. I'm going to make the call and see if I can boat up on the river. The river comes the four of hearts, putting a fourth heart on the board. I check, and the middle position player checks back with king-queen for the flop straight. Pretty lucky run out for me as it killed the action for both of us and I didn't end up losing more chips. In this one, there's a limp from under the gun. I look down at queen-jack offsuit in middle position and raise it to 15. I get calls from the cutoff, big blind, and under the gun. Once again, going four ways to a flop of queen, eight, six, two hearts. Big blind checks. With top pair and a bunch of draws available, I see bet for 40 and I get called by the cutoff and the big blind. Turn comes the six of diamonds, pairing the board. I think I can get a thin second street of value here, so I bet 60. The cutoff folds, but the big blind makes the call. Quick note on the big blind player, they've just reloaded for the second time since I sat down. They've been getting destroyed in bomb pots, and my read is that they could potentially be on tilt and calling down with the worst queen. We're heads up to the river, which comes a clean four of clubs. Big blind checks. I'm going with my read, and I bet 185, putting my opponent all in. They think for about 45 seconds before making the fold, and they later told me that they had ace-queen. So I play for about uh, an hour, an hour and a half, uh, no really big hands to report. That queen-jack hand was weird because that's, I think, the first time I get a bluff through thinking I was value betting. So yeah, I'm about to head back in there, uh, and hopefully we uh, win some big pots. Let's go. 
So I just went back in and my table broke. So maybe it's the poker gods or whatever. But it looks like we might be back to the original plan, which was to try and play in as many venues as possible. So right now I'm headed to Rialto in downtown Portland. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys there. All right, here we are in the heart of downtown Portland. I find a parking spot right outside of Rialto and it looks like the building next door is a congregating point for some of the city's homeless people. I'm not judging, everybody's got different circumstances, but there's two things you don't want to do playing poker. Playing scared money and playing scared your car is going to get broken into. For that reason, I decide to park in a parking garage across the street until I'm told that some players have had their windows smashed and it's suggested I'd be better off parking outside the venue. Turns out Rialto has two security guys and they'll happily keep an eye on your car, so I end up going back to my initial parking spot. In any case, don't let that deter you because inside Rialto is what might become one of my favorite venues to play poker in Portland. Rialto is a pool room on the ground floor. They have a beautiful bar and a bunch of pool tables, but I'm here for the poker action and that's up the stairs on the first level. They've got four tables, they offer 1-1 one, one No Limit Hold'em as well as 1-2 Big O on Mondays. One player at the table is sitting on just over 900 bucks and invites me to play table stakes. I'm happy to oblige and I buy in for 910. I take my seat at the table and don't be fooled by the low stakes. There's a bunch of money on the table and I witness several 2K pots being exchanged within the first half hour of me sitting down. I'm looking forward to getting involved. Let's get into it. I unfortunately start out this session a little bit card dead before I get involved in this hand where we join the action on a flop of ace 5 10 rainbow. I raised a 15 pre-flop from the small blind and the big blind was the only player to make the call. On this board I throw out a c bet of 15 and the big blind pretty much snap calls. Turn comes the 7 of clubs which is a pretty good card for me I guess because I got 7 deuce. Having picked up some showdown value I slow down and check and the big blind checks back. River comes the queen of hearts check to my opponent and they fire out a very small bet of 15. I sense some weakness and after a little bit I decide to throw in the call. I get the good news as my opponent says you got it. I show 7 deuce and take the pot down. Literally the very next shuffle I put out the $5 button straddle which the small blind calls. Big blind raises to 15. Under the gun calls. Action folds to me and I look down at pocket kings. Wow. A 3 bet to 50. Small blind folds. The big blind, four bets to 150. Under the gun folds and it's back on me. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, what a great spot getting four bet into and I've got kings and you would be correct. But here's the thing. So far, I've only seen this player put piles of chips into the pot with a set. So my read is that they're playing pretty tight and more on the value side. And we're both pretty deep stacked. I started the hand with over 800 bucks and they have me covered. Poker gods, please don't let it be aces. I 5 bet to 375, which is barely above a min raise. I pick the sizing because I think I can maybe still get away if my opponent jams, but it doesn't come to that as they just flat call. It makes it less likely, but not impossible, that they have aces. There's close to 800 bucks in the pot. We go heads up to the flop of Jack Jack 6 2 clubs. At this point, I don't think I have any other option but to shove for my remaining 450. I take a deep breath, <sighs> slide my chips in, cowering internally, praying not to get snap called. And thankfully I don't. In fact, my opponent pretty quickly folds and they later told me they had ace king. Little mid session update, currently sitting on uh, just over 1.2k, I think. Uh, that hand with Kings was, if I'm completely honest, freaking scary, you know? I got those thoughts going through my head, like don't make the first night that I'm playing deep, the night that I run Kings into Aces, because that would be, oh my God. Like that was, you know, big portion of my bankroll again. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying the content so far. I'm gonna head back in, play a couple more hands, and then uh, we'll be heading home, wrapping this up. See you in there. Okay, in this one, we're playing a five card Three boards, two winners bomb pot. It's a first for me, but I have plenty of experience playing two boards, which is a game where you're pretty much looking to make the nuts. So the same is going to apply here, but I'll have to exercise caution because with three boards and two winners, you can potentially make the nuts on one board, but still lose to bigger hands on the two others. I hope that makes sense. 
So I get dealt ace, jack, 10, six, deuce with the nut diamond draw. Top flop comes three clubs, middle board comes six, king, jack, and bottom comes jack, four, queen, two diamonds. Looks like I won't be winning the top board. I pick up two pair on the middle and a gut shot stray draw and a nut flush draw on bottom. One thing to note, since there's only two winners, I've got to look for potentially bigger flush draws on the other boards, but with the king and jack of clubs already accounted for, the biggest club flush possible is ace queen 975 on top, but if I hit my diamond on bottom, my flush will be ace queen 10, so I'll have that flush out kicked. So on this flop, action checks around to the button who bets 10, and three players, including myself, make the call. Four ways to the turn, which comes a seven on top pairing the board, a three on middle, and the three of diamonds on bottom. I make the nut flush. Action checks to me and I decide to bet 50. Two players make the call. Three ways to the river, which comes a king on top, six on middle, and a four on bottom. Ugh. So in summary, I've got nothing on top. I pick up a full house on middle, sixes over jacks, and I still have the nut flush on bottom, but the board paired. For that reason, I decide to exercise caution and check. Action checks around, so we go to showdown, 9-7 is going to take down top board and one half of the pot with a full house, 7s over 9s. No one shows a full house on bottom, and it looks like my full house on middle is good. The third player flopped the nut flush on top and was drawing to the nut flush on middle. Unfortunately for them, they didn't get there, and they now lose to a full house on top. So I'm going to win the other half of the pot. Last end of the vlog, in this one, I look down at Jack-9 suited under the gun. We're playing shorthanded, so I'm going to come in with a raise to 10, which to cut off and small blind call. We go three ways to a flop of King 10 3 Rainbow. With the gutshot straight draw and a backdoor flush draw, I decide to see bet for 20. Cutoff is the only player to make the call. Plan is to continue firing on any diamond, 8 or queen, obviously. Heads up to the turn and BING! It's the Queen of Spades, gave me the straight. This board is pretty connected, so I'm going to bet on the larger side here. I continue for 60 and my opponent makes the call. Hoping for a clean river, which comes the five of hearts, perfect. Looks like the cutoff has around 150 behind. I put them all in, and unfortunately, they pretty quickly make the fold. It's getting pretty late, so I rack up and head home. All right, so I just made it back home. It's 2.30 in the morning, tomorrow's a school day. It's going to be rough, but I had a great time playing tonight and uh, getting some good content for you guys. I have yet to play in a couple more venues here in the Portland area, so there will be a part three to this video. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the series. I just want to point it out in case it wasn't clear in the video, but uh, Portland is rake free poker. Uh, all you have to pay is a door fee. Also, the games play very deep here. I mean, I bought in for 1K at 1.3. When I showed up at Rialto, uh, the player with the biggest stack uh, insisted that we uh, match the stack, so I bought in for 910. Not used to playing this deep stacked. That king's hand with a uh, thousand bucks effective stacks was, uh, yeah, that was a little adrenaline rush right there. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, drop me a comment, subscribe if you want to catch my next video. Thank you for watching. Good luck at the tables, and I'll catch you in the next one.